Most type LNG carriers have a unique appearance due to their spherical cargo tanks. The independent type cargo tanks are built in accordance with the IGC code. They are encased within the inner hull and are situated in line from forward to aft. The tanks are equipped to carry LNG at cryogenic temperatures and at a pressure that is marginally higher than atmospheric pressure. They are insulated to reduce cargo loss through natural boil-off. The materials used for the containment system are required to reduce the heat transfer from the hull structure to minimize the boil-off gas from the cargo as well as to protect the hull structure from the effects of cryogenic temperature. There is no secondary barrier as the tanks primarily due to their spherical construction have a high degree of safety against fracture or failure. The basis for the Type B philosophy is the leak before failure concept which presumes that the primary barrier will fail progressively, not suddenly and catastrophically. In the exceptional case of a crack occurring in the tank, a small leakage of LNG within the insulation will be detected at an early stage by the carrier's comprehensive gas monitoring and leakage detection systems. The spherical steel cover protects the tank and its insulation. It also allows us to control the hold space atmosphere. The lower edge of the cover is welded to the deck, forming a watertight seal. A flexible rubber seal is used at the point where the tank dome protrudes out from the cover. The void spaces between the cargo tanks, the water ballast tanks and the tank cover are called hold spaces. A positive pressure of inert gas or dry air is maintained in the void space surrounding each tank. A cargo tank is housed within a hold and each hold is separated by a watertight bulkhead. The spaces at the tank shoulders are used for the passage of electrical cables and various piping systems. Most tanks are insulated using flat panel insulation or spiral generation system. The tanks are heavily insulated with polystyrene foam ranging between 150 mm and 250 mm thick to reduce natural boil-off to a minimum. The shield is formed by the aluminium foil surface of the tank insulation. The foil protects the insulation and directs any leakage away. Liquid flow from the northern hemisphere collects in the drain channel which is formed by the upper skirt ring stiffener and is directed to the leakage pipes located forward, aft, port and starboard of the tank. These pipes direct the liquid onto the void space deck and then to the drip pan. All drain pipes except one are fitted with gas-tight rupture discs designed to fail at cryogenic temperatures. They will rupture on contact with LNG. The leakage pipe without a disc has a gas detection sensor fitted to provide early warning of a possible leakage. A tray or pail is installed directly below the cargo tank. It functions as a leak protection system which can collect a small leak of liquid cargo in the catch basin on the double bottom. The basin is lined with polystyrene which is coated with a protective cover of stainless steel. It is fitted with temperature sensors to detect the presence of LNG and an eductor system to allow for removal of the liquid. The port and starboard ballast tanks are separated by a pipe tunnel or pipe duct space extending the full length of the under tank area. It is a special casting joint between the aluminium and steel sections of the cylindrical supporting skirt. It is fitted between the skirt and the tank's equatorial ring to strengthen this intersection and acts as a thermal brake. It reduces heat conduction from the ship's structure into the tank and vice versa. The equatorial ring has a special profile and is fitted at the tank's equator. It is connected to a metal skirt whose lower part is welded to the ship's structure. The skirt transmits the weight of the tank and the cargo to the lower hull. The skirt is stiffened in the upper part by horizontal rings and the lower part by vertical corrugated stiffeners. The spaces between the inner hull and outer hull are used for ballast and will also protect the cargo tanks in the event of an emergency situation, such as a collision or grounding. Ballast is taken in wing or side tanks and crosswater tanks. Ballast may also be taken in the fore and aft peak tanks. Each cargo tank has two double bottom wing tanks, namely port and starboard. The wing tanks extend on the sides from the pipe tunnel to the trunk spaces. In a four tank arrangement, there are three cross ballast tanks situated between the cargo tanks 
and a center ballast tank forward of number one cargo tank. The central pipe tower or tubular tower is fitted in the drome. It provides access into the tank, carries various level measuring systems and supports the pipes and cables running to and from the cargo pumps. The tower is fitted with guides at the lower end to restrict movement but allow for expansion. Any LNG liquid leakage between the tank plating and the insulation drains by gravity through a drain tube to the drip pan. The drain tube is sealed in normal service by a bursting disc which is designed to fail at cryogenic temperatures. The equatorial ring has a special profile and is fitted at the tank's equator. It is connected to a metal skirt whose lower part is welded to the ship's structure. The skirt transmits the weight of the tank and the cargo to the lower hull. The skirt is stiffened in the upper part by horizontal rings and the lower part by vertical corrugated stiffeners. Special transition joint is a special casting joint between the aluminium and steel sections of the cylindrical supporting skirt. It is fitted between the skirt and the tank's equatorial ring to strengthen this intersection and acts as a thermal break. It reduces heat conduction from the ship's structure into the tank and vice versa. Before LNG is loaded into the tanks, the whole spaces should be dry to avoid any moisture penetration into the tank insulation. There is a hold space heating and drying system to dry out these spaces, thereby removing moisture and preventing any dew forming. This also has the added benefit of preventing corrosion. Note that if the relative humidity is kept below 50 to 60 percent, the corrosion rate can be kept extremely low. The hold spaces must also be free of carbon dioxide as it will solidify at a temperature of minus 78.5 degrees centigrade.